Hey, what up you beauties? Welcome back to the kitchen. This time we're actually doing something that kind of needs to be done in the kitchen. Funny how that works, eh? We are making some personal sized Oreo cheesecakes. And let me tell you guys, if you're not really too sure about making them yourself, this is a fantastic recipe to start with. There are very minimal ingredients and you don't really have to do as much effort as making an, a full size cheesecake. But trust me, is one of my favorite things to make. But anyways, we're gonna start with the ingredients. We're gonna start with the most obvious one. Some Oreos, these packages come with 24. We need 21. That means it's snack time, baby. You can have three of them if you're the baker. Or I mean, if you're feeling generous, whoever's watching. You are gonna need two packages of cream cheese and you're gonna need two eggs. With respect to the cream cheese and eggs, don't leave them in here and start with them right away. Throw them on the counter, let them pick up room temperature a little more, and then mix. It's like a joke in comparison. You need some sugar. We need some vanilla extract. We're gonna need some salt. And of course, we're gonna need some sour cream. Let's get to it, guys. I'm gonna bump you down here, and off we go. Okay, so first things first, guys. I would strongly suggest that you use these little guys to throw in there to make sure that when it comes to clean up, it's a heck of a lot easier for you. So I'm gonna throw these guys in here real quick. And then next up, an Oreo in every base. Some recipes call for them to be split. I am not splitting them at all. They are staying as a full Oreo. Now that that part's complete, this pan goes off to the side. And a mixed size bowl comes into play. For starters, we start by just beating the cream cheese until it's smooth, and then we get into mixing some sugar. But let's get started with this. We add half a cup of sugar. The next up is a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm just gonna pop in there. We're gonna mix in there to start. And then we're gonna mix the eggs in one at a time. Okay, so now we're on to cookies. Obviously I'm mixing eggs, guys, and trust me, it's as boring as boring can be. So, we have our six Oreos to cut up. What we're aiming for in terms of cut-ups is something that's nice and thin, so I chop them this way to start with. Usually I try to get them in about six pieces. This time I'm unfortunately only getting five. But then you take them all together and kind of crisscross it to get kind of crumbles, if you will. So this one, we do the same thing. Back to mixing. So now we're on to the final step for mixing. As you guys saw, while I was busy mixing eggs in there, I chopped these guys up. So they're all ready to go in. Now, they can all go in at once, not too too bad. You wanna be very careful in terms of mixing. You don't wanna over mix it. So, we switch to a spatula for this. And you just kinda of fold it around and mix it in there well, but not too well because you're not spinning anything. We're just kinda of folding it over itself, mixing it up. Now, on to filling them. Keep in mind, we are aiming to make 15. I kept this as a single batch on, as out of 12, if you will, to make sure that it looks good to you guys. So, in terms of fill up, there is no rise to them whatsoever. So when you're putting the dough in, fill it up. Make sure they're about even, and absolutely make sure that you do have an Oreo at the bottom before you start trying to fill them up because that will do a big difference for you when it comes to the volume that they suck up. But I'll see you guys in just a second when these are all full. And there you have it guys. So basically, you fill them up and then you, well, an example's better, on the counter. Sorry about the loudness there. But basically, you wanna make sure that they're level. The thing with these types of cakes is, quite honestly, they don't rise and they don't really perfect themselves in the oven. There are little lumps that you can see. A lot of those happen to be Oreos. The other little ones, like the little lines here and there, will kind of take effect. But the other thing to remember is that these are currently upside down. Zoom, and finally they're done. 
Okay, so four hours later in your case, they should be good to go. I've left this one for about 24 hours. This is how they pop out. And obviously they're upside down in this case, but it's referred to as an upside down cheesecake. So maybe it's right side up if it was a muffin. So we're gonna unwrap it here, guys. You will find that in a lot of cases, the uh, wrappers for muffins or cupcakes do kind of rip off. And depending on how much you spend on them, they take part of it with them. <laughs> so anyways, effectively what we're looking for is something that looks like this without missing the part of the Oreo there. Well, let's give it a shot. I'll tell you guys how I feel about it and hopefully you feel the same way whenever you get the time to make them. Mmm. Honestly guys, nice rich little cheesecake and trust me, they're about as good as a big one but obviously big ones take a little bit more effort. I'll see you guys next week. You probably know what's going down. You take care. I'll see you then.